Um, I found my son. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Damian Cryer, and I'm back with another video. Hope you guys are having a wonderful and blessed, amazing day today. If you have not subscribed to the Cryer family, all you have to do is turn that bell on, so subscribe to the channel. But being subscribed to the channel, only means are subscribed. In order to get the notifications, every time I drop a video on the Cryer family, you must turn on that bell with the vibrating symbol. That way, every time I upload a video on the Cryer family, all of you guys will get the notifications. <sighs> oh my god so guys as you guys know this is the month of february man this is like the hardest month for me um this time of year um as you guys know february is the day that my oldest son deontay was born as you guys know my son has passed away a few years back from a drowning over in indiana and every year around this time I get into like this really, really depressive stage where I really think about him a lot. Um, I'm gonna be showing you some clips, guys, of some things that like happened to me throughout my life. What well, two of the worst things that happened to me throughout my life being um, the first thing that happened to me because it was the very first thing that happened to me where I almost lost my life. I ended up getting shot six times on the street one night. Um, it was a drug deal. I'm not going to lie. Um, then I was shot six times. I was robbed and I almost lost my life that night. And um, I ended up surviving a shooting incident. Um, it took a while for, the heal, for me to heal, but I ended up surviving it, which I'm still here today and I'm grateful for it. One of the second things that happened years later on down the line was me losing my eldest son, my, my oldest son, Deontay, to a drowning. And this has devastated me since the beginning of time, like since this all has happened. Um, I think about Deontay every single day. There's not a day that goes by that I don't think about my son. You know, I miss him. I love him so much, man. And I constantly think about him. Um, his birthday is coming up February 5th. And it's like um, the thinking process is like nonstop wondering, like, what he will be doing now and the type of stuff that he would be into now and missing him sending me videos of him catching this big bass or pictures of him sent him sending me pictures of him showing me pictures of a big walleye or a big bluegill that he caught at some pond or lake i mean i just it's crazy some things you just never get over and losing a love when it's one thing that you never get over um so I decided to go ahead and go back and break down a couple of videos for you guys and just insert some clips. Um, remembering, you know, it's for me, you know, to remember some of the awful things that happened to me. And that's why, like, when I tell you guys, when people say, how do you feel about this person saying this about you or this person saying that or this person doing this? I don't let stuff bother me, man, especially when it comes to my kids, man, because one thing I can tell you about my kids, no one, no man on this earth or no woman on this earth will ever keep me from my kids. I don't care what they say, what they do, what they try to convince people. No man or woman on this earth will ever keep me away from none of my kids. And this is why I'm so motivated and so close to my children and I try to do whatever I can for them. You know, if they want something, I make sure that I'm on top of it. You know, I love my family to death, man, and my children especially. But yeah, I'm gonna be doing like a birthday. I mean, not a birthday. I'm gonna be doing like a video tomorrow in remembrance of my son Deontay. Just telling you guys, like, you know, what kind of person he was and what he meant to me. But I decided, you know, to just upload these few little clips showing you guys, you know, some of the moments that I had in my life that really, really changed my life as a man. So these, this video right here, um, this is just some of the moments of some of the really bad things that happened to your boy because i have like a, not a, 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 a whole lot of new subscribers who really don't know much about me except that they subscribe to the channel for maybe a certain reason whatever it was a prank or 
something that they've seen on my channel or maybe they came from other channels that people are making videos about me whatever that the case was they're here so i just want to just give them like a little background about me and you know some of the things that's happened to me in my life so we're gonna go ahead and roll this video guys and don't forget to comment on the video down below um let me know what your thoughts is on this video but let's get into the video guys your boy is doing okay it's extremely 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 early morning i'm just really waking up um and i'm actually i'm still in my hotel room so i got to thinking um a couple weeks ago you know like and like a lot of my videos or a lot of my vlogs or whatever mukbangs i tell you guys like i try to give you guys more of me um more of me than just what you see in a youtube video i try to give you guys a little bit more of me as far as my life where i come from and basically i never really tell you guys where i'm trying to go not yet but i tell you where i come from and in multiple videos I have said that, you know, like when I got shot and stuff and people asked me to do a documentary, I still never did one. I never put one together. Um, who knows? Maybe one day I will. But every time I come back home to Indiana and I still say home, even though I live in Houston, Indiana's going to always be my home. Always, always. I can come back at any given time. All I gotta do is pack up and go. 1997, the homicide rate by the month of May had already reached 43 homicides. And I could have been the 44th. And every time I think about that, man, it is crazy. It's crazy. Like, when it gets cold, I get bad arthritis in my arm because that's where the first bullet had struck me. When I knocked at the door, the bullet went through my arm, came out my elbow. I don't know if you, if you guys can actually see this. You actually see that. That was the first bullet hole right there that actually went in and the bullet came out my elbow. Can't really show you guys the other bullet holes, but... But yeah, so I was thinking, why not... Well, first of all, I had to build up enough courage to actually do it and go back over there. I have to build up enough courage to actually drive down that street, get out of my vehicle and actually let you guys walk with me while I record where they actually shot me at, the location where they found me at on the ground. I'm actually approaching, I'm actually on the street where I got shot at multiple times, 1997. Um, I'm actually approaching the house. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually, I said I wasn't gonna get out of my truck. But you know what? I'm going to get out of my truck. Just for a second. I ain't going to get out of my truck for long. Because I don't know, like, basically what to expect. Being that I'm outside people's house with a camera. I remember being in this neighborhood right here, man. We were selling drugs. Everybody had a gun. This was like the party area. So this right here, this house right here, is where I lived at when I got shot. I'm hoping I don't have any problems out here. I just parked my truck right here on the street. So yeah, I lived in that house right there where I got shot at. Um, and basically my car was parked in the driveway of this house. My car was parked in, in this driveway right here. And one day I end up getting a phone call. Now back then I was selling drugs, I'm not gonna lie. And a guy that I know very well, he lived like four doors down. He called me, said, it was like two in the morning. He said, hey bro, can you bring me six for a hundred? Back then we were slanging those pebbles and it was $20 a piece. So he was like, can you bring me six for a hundred? So I was like, yeah, I got you bro. So I, my Cadillac was parked right there where that car was parked at. I jumped in my Cadillac and I put it in reverse. And I reversed, I'm finna walk four houses down. So one, two, 
and three. Bam. This house right here is where I got shot at. When I got shot, when I got shot, I fell in the grass right here. I fell in the grass. My car was right here where this truck at. And I basically crawled on my elbows. I basically crawled on my elbows out to my car where the shooting kept occurring. He kept shooting and shooting and shooting. Um, I remember the first bullet caught me in the arm. And there's a house right here. They got a new door up now. Three of the bullets that hit me, three of the bullets that hit me had went through this door right here across the street. And there was a lady had lived in that house. We used to call her Candy. Her nickname was Candy. And she was, I, I, I remember her coming out the house screaming and stuff. And I remember laying in this very spot right here in this grass. Literally, I was on my elbows crawling, trying to get away, and I was trying to pull my gun out too. But it seemed like the more that I tried to pull my gun out of my waistband, the bullets just kept hitting me and hitting me and hitting me and hitting me. And there was nothing I can do. The last thing I remember is seeing like the flashing lights. Uh, I remember a bunch of police cars, sirens in the background. I remember waking up and them cutting my clothes off me, like trying to count the bullet holes to, before they took me to the hospital. And I don't know, man. I remember when I got out of the hospital, like it may have been like a month later. I was in the hospital forever, it seemed like. I remember the police coming to the house. Remember, I came right back to this very house right here behind me, this house right behind me. Four houses down before I got shot at. I remember coming back to this house when I got to the hospital. And I remember the police coming to this house, locking on the door and asking me, was I Damien Cryer? And they wanted to talk to me about what had happened to me. And um, I remember giving them the story about how I got shot, but I didn't tell them I was selling drugs. I just gave them some, some little bullshit story. I'm gonna get out of here because some people riding past, slowing down, looking crazy. Okay, guys, I just got up here to um, Lakeside Pond. Um, it's really, really windy out here. So yeah, this is this is the park. This is the pond where they actually found my son at. I'll never forget that morning I was at work. Um. Actually, it was actually not that morning. It was the night before. The day before, I'll never forget. It was raining really hard outside. That morning, it was raining extremely, extremely hard outside. I'll never forget because I'm like, wow, I've never seen it rain so hard like this here. So I was at work at Valbrona. It was, it's, a, it's a steel mill in Fort Wayne. I used to work at before I moved out to Houston. Um... They asked me to work a 12 hour shift that day. And I was like, okay, fine, you know, I need the money anyway. And I never forget, my son Deontay had texted me that morning. He said, dad, can I use your boat? I was like, yeah, you can use my boat. I said, but you need a truck. He said, well, I got an SUV now, dad. I was like, yeah, you can go to the house and grab my boat. I said, knock at the door, make sure she know you there. You know, so she don't be like, who is it in my backyard? You know, messing with Damien's boat. And I remember getting off work later on that evening. Um, um, I got off work and I got home. And, and I, you know, I pulled up in the driveway like I do every day when I get off work. And I seen my boat way in the back of the house still with the tarp over it. I'm like, he didn't come and get the boat today. That's weird. So I said, maybe he changed his mind because of all of the rain. So I, I didn't think nothing of it. So I went in the house and I took a shower. And somebody start beating on the door. Somebody start beating on the door. I'm like, who the hell beat on my door like that? So I went to the door. It was this lady. My son used to date this lady's granddaughter. I don't really want to say names because, you know, just out of respect for these people. So this lady and her granddaughter was knocking at the door. And I'm like, what's going on? I came to the door. She's like, hey, your son is missing. He went fishing at Lakeside and his truck is out there and his fishing poles is out there. 
but he's nowhere to be found. So me thinking like, well, maybe my son maybe jump in a car with another female or something. It might be, you know, kicking it with another woman or something and just left the stuff there, you know. So I ended up calling his mom and right as I called his mom, she was on her way out the lakeside to search for him. And so I got in my truck and came out here too. And we walked around and we seen his truck and stuff. It was like, well, this fishing stuff is right there. Like something's not right here. So we, you know, he had two cell phones. So we kept calling his phones and he wouldn't answer none of them. I remember one of his phones kept going straight to the voicemail. I'm like, damn, he normally answered his phone. And so we end up going back home well, actually, everybody had came out here and we walked around, you know, knocking on doors, asking people questions. And the lady remembers seeing a guy out there fishing and she said she looked up, he was fishing. And then she said she looked up and he just disappeared. So we all left, but we all left the park wondering because we couldn't get into his truck because we didn't have his keys. So we figured, well, we'll wait and see. He'll call us tonight. He might be with one of his little girlfriends or something, side pieces or whatever. The call never came. So I remember going to work that morning. It was so hard to sleep that next day. I ended up going to work that morning. And when I got to work, but first I'm gonna get out and show you guys. Um, but where I'm zooming the camera in, right here. You guys see that little bridge right there? That bridge right, th oops. That bridge right there is where Dion was fishing at. And right as I turn my camera, you see the first tree, the second tree, the third tree is a skinny tree right there. That's where his fishing equipment was actually laying at. And his truck was parked over on one of those streets over there. I'm at the cemetery now. So because of the COVID, they're not letting anybody inside. You have to call a number to actually have somebody come out. So I just gave this guy my son's name. They're gonna give me a map um, to help assist me. I know where my son's location is at. He's at the praying hands. But this is my first time here since his funeral. Yeah. This is... Lindenwood. Most of my... Um, most of my family members are buried out here. My mom's out here. My little brother's out here. Um, my little brother was killed uh, just not far from this location in 1995. His name was Ronald Dwayne Cryer. So most of my aunties and uncles are buried right here. And I'm quite sure one day I'm going to be visiting this area um, for my final resting place as well. Um, but yeah, so I'm just waiting on him to come out now and show me around, um, take where I need to go. So I know this part right here is not gonna be easy for me at all. This is not gonna be easy. But I said I was gonna film it, and I was gonna record it. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, I've actually been out to the cemetery multiple times. It's just that like I've come back on my, my on, um, Mother's Day. Um, I've come back on birthdays and stuff like that. Certain people's birthdays just to say a prayer, clean off their gravesite. But I've never really, oh man. I've never really came out here to visit one of my own kids. So this is definitely gonna be different to come here to visit one of my own kids. I've never had to do anything like this in my life. And I'm really hoping that I'd never have to do anything like this again. My kids should be burying me. I should not be burying my kids. But, you know, I just wish that day that Deontay wouldn't have went out. I wish that he would have stayed home. It was raining that day. He really, Deontay shouldn't even have been out there on the water that day. But that was his passion for fishing. He died doing what he loved to do. And, you know, for me, I actually blame myself you know, people say that I shouldn't, but I actually blame myself for my son's passing because he loved to do what I love to do. I taught him what I love to do. 
I don't really play basketball like like that. I didn't really didn't play it growing up like that. I didn't really play football growing up like that. My passion, my sports, my hobby was fishing. And he just wanted to just be like his dad, you know. He loved the water, he loved the water sports. You know, he had his run-ins with the law just like I did at a young age. And when he got out, when he came home, he started really taking life more serious, you know. But here comes the guy, so I'm gonna see you guys in a minute. This is crazy, man. I'm actually following the guy, Scott. He's taking me to my son's location. Yep. This is crazy. This is crazy for me to even believe that I'm even happy to even, you know, live to even witness this moment right here. I've been in Houston for almost two years. I've been in Houston for almost two years now. And I've been in Fort Wayne probably nine times since I lived out there. And every time I came to Fort Wayne, I said I was gonna come out here and I never did. I never came. Because every time I got close to the gates, I turned around. I turned around and went back the other way. I just couldn't do it. So today, I'm actually, I'm actually gonna face one of my worst fears. I don't have my seatbelt on, that's the noise. I'm gonna face one of my worst fears, guys. I'm gonna actually, I'm actually gonna do this. There's no turning back now. Just the thought of me, I don't know. I can't even put the right words with it. Praying hands, that's what I said, praying hands. So, um, I found my son. February 5th, 1989. Passed away May 25th, 2017. So this is why, this is why, this is why I, I say don't take life for granted because you never know when it's gonna be your time. You never know. My son loved fishing and he passed away doing what he loves to do. On his tombstone, he actually asked, he has the fish right there and it shows him right there holding a the fishing pole. off guys I'm gonna spend some time with him and I'll just see you guys